Hey YouTube, welcome back to Unix TCG, and today we are hopping back into more OPO8 coverage for you One Piece fans of the channel. And I will let you guys know that we will be doing a case break of OPO7, and if I can get any additional boxes in my local area, those will be given away on uh, Patreon, like packs from those will be given away on Patreon for my members. So with that being said, I want to see if we can get this video over 100 likes, because today we are talking about the illustrious, the majestic, the very, very strong-looking Marco leader, and uh, its potential ramifications. We're going to talk about some of the cards that have some really good synergy with it, as well as some of the cards that we've already gotten spoiled from the set. So buckle in and let us jump into talking about this new leader. Okay, so let's first talk about the new card in question, new cards in question. We've got Marco, a leader from OPO8. He is a red blue leader, four life, 5,000 power, and uh, special attack attribute. And uh, yeah, he's a white beard pirate, so as to be expected. But Dawn X1, activate main once per turn, draw one card, then place one card from your hand to the top or bottom of your deck, then give up to one of your opponent's characters minus 2k for the turn. Okay, so there's a lot to break down here. Um, one, just being a white beard pirate is going to give him so much access to a bunch of good cards. So there's going to be a lot of stuff we can talk about there. Um, red and blue is a particularly interesting combination because while it doesn't necessarily synergize off the rip like, uh, per se, black and purple does, lowering cost and destroying off cost, or a black and blue where you can lower cost and um, bottom decker, you know, do stuff off of that. Red is really the only color that operates off of power, and because of that, you don't really have any inherent synergy. But what blue does have are a lot of effects that do help it um, rearrange the top of your deck, draw through your cards. It's got some good defensive capabilities, along with red, which is going to be able to manipulate power and destroy based off that power. And it has rush, so what you have is the propensity to make a pretty good tempo deck. And with the cards that are available to red, this can become probably a monster all on its own. The other things I would like to say is that because it has an inherent minus 2k power on the leader, uh, this is actually just going to have like almost a Sakazuki-like effect, where the minus 1 allowed you to use so many cards in so many different ways. This is going to do the same thing with a lot of Red's destructive arsenal. Last but not least, the drawing a card and putting a card at the bottom of your deck or the top of your deck is amazing. First off, lots of people don't understand that Sakazuki's draw and discard effect, um, or sorry, discard and draw effect, is actually mechanically not correct. And not saying like, oh, I like the card's wrong. I'm saying like, it sucks to drop a card not knowing what you're gonna get next. You could potentially draw a worse card than the card you dropped, even though you dropped the worst card in your hand. So with this Marco, you're drawing and then putting on the top, top, uh, top or bottom of your deck, allowing yourself to make the best possible decision with what cards you pick up and what card you proceed to put out of your hand. Then the last part about this is that because he is able to stack, not only are you able to get a card completely out of the way by putting it at the bottom of your deck, but you're also able to put it on the top of your deck. And blue has cards that are going to be able to flip the top card of your deck and do things with them. And we are going to get into that. So yes, Marco is looking crispy as a new leader for OPO8, and I just don't see this guy not being a huge part of the meta, even without new cards being spoiled for it. But speaking of new cards spoiled for it, I guess not the whole suite, but we've got a couple. First, we have this Portgaz D Ace, blue character. Um, he's a rare, five cost, 6,000 power special, white beard pirates, counter 1,000, and on play, you reveal one card on the top of your deck, and you may put this card into play, um, you may put into play up to one character with type white beard pirates and a cost of four or less. After this, return the remaining cards from the top or bottom of the deck. So, this is good for this deck. It's bad, in my opinion, for the game because 10 Dawn used to mean 10 Dawn, but with Gecko Moria's and Rebecca's, we're constantly doing more and more with just the Dawn we have. This card is trying to play 9 Dawn for five. It just is what it is. Uh, they're circumventing the Dawn by just cheating things into play. But this is a really, really cool card because Marco, again, will always, without, without fail, allow you to choose your target. And because this is a five cost, that means that uh, if you're going second, this is live on turn three. Unfortunately, if you're going first, this is live only on turn four because you have to have the Dawn to stack and then you have to have um, you know this card doing its thing. Now, that being said, if you are using cards like Perona and whatnot, which I'm not sure if you'd want to, mainly because not only does it not synergize with the deck and you have to hard draw it, but this 
leader is going to be able to drop stuff or put stuff on or off. But I will say, if you do go first, having a card like Corona already used and remembering the order of the cards on the top of your deck will allow you to use effect of this on curve. So, hey, we'll see. We'll see what cards are released. I'm sure there's going to be some more stacked top fives and things like that. But this guy is going to be able to play essentially nine, uh, anywhere between, I guess, since it can do a one drop too. Um, and it doesn't actually say blue character. It says a play up to one character. So this can play anywhere from six to nine dawn. It doing anything from playing some four drops that we may not see later, um, or playing things out like Marco Blocker, or um, or being able to play out like an Ezo to uh, to search. There's a lot of poten uh, potential with this card, but it is just very very strong. And who's to say? When you draw a card and then put an Ezo on the top of your deck and then play out this guy and then have this guy flip that Ezo into play and then you search your top five, did you really put a card on the top of your deck? No, you actually plussed. That's insane. And uh, yeah, that's just, this card alone is crazy. Now a 6K stat line isn't really that impressive, especially seeing what this leader can do on his own. But I do think that this is pretty, pretty, pretty nice just starting off seeing what we can get from this deck. Now let's look at another card that we got spoiled recently. This is Jozu, a uh, blue character. He's got a uh, six cost, so he won't be usable off that uh, leader's effect. Seven thousand off that uh, character's effect. Seven thousand power, and uh, strike. Whitebeard pirates counter one thousand. Uh, on play, you may return one of your characters other than this card to your hand. Return up to one six or lower character to the original owner's hand. I need to see the rest of the archetype because this is a card that automatically looks kind of lackluster. Uh, he has a cap on his removal. He has to reset one of your cards. This is um, this seems a little lackluster, but we will have to see. Now, a card that came out in OP07 is actually uh, this right here. This blo uh, this blocker, Port Gaz D Ace, five cost, blue, white beard pirates, blocker, uh, and then uh, on play, draw two cards and place two cards from your hand to the top or bottom of your deck in the order. This card was clearly made knowing that they were going to make Marco because the synergize is just too well. Um, a very Sabo-like effect of drawing two and then getting rid of two, but instead of going to your trash, you can stack them, allowing you to particularly be able to set up some nice plays where you see two cards or you draw um, two cards and then you put a card to draw for your next turn and then a card to use potentially off the top of your deck with another effect and that could be really 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 cool or if you want them uh if you know that you have a card you want to if you just want to draw both of them you can play this guy draw two put down two and then just use marco's effect to get it back to hand so there's a lot you can do with a card like this is this card too slow i don't know we've seen a couple of 5ks so <laughs> these might be too slow but we also know that whitebeard is in no whitebeard pirates has no shortage of the cards they can already play in these slots so this is amazing now going through some of these cards right there are some cards that are going to be better um look at sea quake right it's up on the screen right now main if your leader has the white beard pirates in its type ko up to one of your opponent's characters with 3k power or less before this was a card that was kind of uh, kind of good it could only be good depending on the format like it was only as good as the format marco was going to just basically read once per turn your sea quake hits 5ks that's good. That's good, good, good. And uh, 5K is a much better stat to work with that we can really, really work with. Who's to say what's going to be exactly as meta once we get to OP08? But I will gladly pay one. I guess technically two. I will gladly pay two to draw one, stack one, and then see Quake a 5K off the board. That's so strong. So, yeah, I'm definitely down with that. Uh, next, we got cards like Fire Fist. Fire Fist, you can discard an event card from your hand, KO up to one of your opponent's characters with 5k power or less, and one of your opponent's characters with 4k power or less. With Marco's effect, you could potentially hit a 7k and a 4k, or more likely, you can hit a 5k and a 6k. Just imagine if right now, I know we're a whole pack and so behind, but right now, if you can have a red leader that could hit Holly and Elm off the field at the same time, a 6k and a 5k. That is what you can do for four energy sorry four dawn and marco's uh actually yeah four dawn drawing stacking choosing card to minus 200 or 2000 and then playing this card so marco is going to give so many more cards reach um i know the cards fall in the favor but just every card that destroys off of power has to be reevaluated. you'll be able to jet pistol 8ks off the board that's monstrous for one more uh for one more uh, dawn for five dawn 
jet pistoling a AK off the board. Yeah, Marco shaping up. And who even knows if we'll even be an extra heavy? But because you have the white beard pirates in uh, in your type, you can also use things like Ace, uh, giving up to two of your uh, opponent's uh, characters minus three thousand power during the turn, and then you know he gains Rush because your leader does fit the the typing. Now, of course, again for eight Dawn, <laughs> you are going to minus something by five K, essentially making it really easy for your leader to swing over it, and then you still have this Rush Ace. The possibilities aren't quite endless, but it's, it's, it's getting there. And these are just cards that are already out. Like that's how insane this leader is hit between his color choice, between his typing and his effect. Um, having the ability to have Marcos in here. This Marco can be played off the top of your deck with this spoiled ace. You can pay five to play this Marco and now you have a 6K swinger, a sticky blocker, <laughs> it can be underestimated a sticky blocker and if you're running uh white beer pirates this guy is going to stay on the field for a long time uh sakazuki being banned hound plays being, these things are really going to make it hard to get rid of a card like this uh you can tap it there's a lot of things you can do but he's going to be a lot, a lot stickier um now you can also play marco five you won't be able to cheat him out so far but he is yet again another white beard card uh he is very sticky depending on the format else we get another well, bottom decking monster soon and this is just going to be a very very good all-round deck just the building blocks that we already have are just so stupid with them now the sort of funny thing is that white beard is probably going to come back um i mean just like this is just he's never really been a bad card nine cost is a lot but nine cost also lets you use your leader effect and still have white beard not to mention that because white beard can destroy something with three uh, three thousand power or less once white beard's on the board you can use your leader effect and put two dawn under white beard and then start swinging with white beard to remove five thousand power bodies that is nuts i mean that is nuts and because you have cards like marco for uh cost marco he's never dead discard him if you need to um because you have your leader you can always put him on the top of your deck if you don't need him this turn but you want extra counter power that's the one of the coolest things you have um you draw a card with marco it's a 2k cool put a zero counter card on the top of your deck so you can draw it next turn when you can actually use it and when it's not going to hamper your defense this is wonderful and then of course because these searchers never really have a color attached to them Ezo is still searching all of these cards and all these future white beer cards to be spoiled which is nasty and then a lot of people have been talking about Haruto but just look at it her if, if this deck pops off do you guys really think Haruto is going to be sticking around Haruta gets cleared by Marco 5. Haruta gets cleared by Seaquake without Marco's effect. It gets cleared by Fire Fist on accident. This card is not your champion. You will spend two Dawn to play this card, and if he survives, that's on you. And also, King? Yeah, no. Like, this guy is going to get breathed on and just get evaporated. So I wouldn't even think about him like that. Next, a card that's actually pretty funny, speaking of uh, minusing, is uh, Crossfire. Now that we have a white beard leader and this could be potential or a white beard pirates leader and this could be potentially a deck that uses a lot of extras, this is an insane card. For three dawn, you can minus something by 6k. That could bring even something like a, that could bring a 10k down to 4k. And then depending on how you dawn, depending on what you have to swing on, you're in the money. Like you have points where you could have a white beard on the board, use something like crossfire, then use the leader's effect. That's three. Then just put two more that's only five out of your 10 dawn put two more under whitebeard whitebeard swings and clears what used to be a ten thousand power card eleven thousand as well eleven thousand is the same f you are going to be able to tear through boards with marco and i'm very excited to see how this turns out in the future um coupling that with cards like fiery doll are pretty cool um then you also have the last part of the tech that i wanted to talk about which is the Sanji. Um, Sanji is just so nasty looking at this. It may be too much, it may be too greedy, it may be over the top, but if Sanji works, whoa, we're in for some funny things. Because you can have a Sanji in hand, activate your leader effect for one, put the white beard on the top of your deck after drawing, 
and then just tap nine for Sanji and play Whitebeard, and then bam, you have the extra 2k plus whatever you have in your hand for defense. And if they can't go to two nine Ks or two nine drops, then you have so much power to work with. Um, moving past that, if you have an effect that stacks multiple deep, like if you are playing Prona or if you did play the Ace and the Whitebeard, you know for a fact is the next card. Even though, like, let's say you use your leader effect and you played Ace, um, the Ace blocker to draw two, stack two and you know that Whitebeard will not be your draw for turn, it'll be the card after. You can draw for turn, then just tap nine for uh, for Sanji, play that Whitebeard and still have one up for Rad Bean. This is just a huge, huge component. And I think that uh, this deck is going to be something special. Just, there's just no way, like if, you, if I thought that King was gonna be special, there's just no way I'm looking at this Marco and not thinking he's something extravagant. From that so yeah that'll be us wrapping up the video now just to get the quick business parts out of the way wanted to let you guys know that i am sponsored by mystic tcg uh you can go down in the description use the code unixtcg in order to get discounts off of your purchases your pre-orders anything they hold events if you live in missouri or if you're close enough to travel ran by an excellent dude named eden and then i also for my canadian brothers and sisters I'm also rocking G3, which is one of the best stores, if not the best stores in Canada for TCGs. They also hold their own events. I know a lot of them personally. Jawdad is an excellent dude. So whether you are in North America or Canada, you got stores to go to and you got codes in the description that can get you money off. Past then, if you guys want to hop on the Patreon and win yourself some TCG product, yes, later we might have some OPO7, but for now we've got three Uta decks and three Zoro and Sanji decks for giveaway for six lucky winners. So with that being said, I will see you in the next article, the next video, the next social media post, wherever you want to interact with me, and I will see you guys next time.